Coming back to my response, this is usually the question I get asked to either debate about or give a lecture on, a lengthy lecture, because it's the hardest question any of us face, whether we're believers, atheists, whatever. There is no question about it, and you'd be as hard as stone if you didn't have a sensitivity, as I do for my many friends and acquaintances who can't believe in God. They say, well, yes, you're talking about all these marvelous evidences in science, and I can see that, but don't you tell me that God is a God of love. And then they tell you some horrific experience. I've been in Auschwitz many times, and I've wept every time. I arrived in New, New Zealand two days after the earthquake. I was there for a lecture tour. I had to change every talk. And by the way, if you're interested in a detailed explanation of my response to this question, Google my name in New Zealand, because they put all TV interviews, radio interviews, and so on up there. And I hope you might find something. Now, when I face this question, this will have to be very short. And in that, in that sense, it's unfair. It's such a hurting question. And it has got two obvious aspects to it. One is, if you're watching the suffering, the other is if you're suffering. You see, cancer, like this bone cancer in a child, looks very different to an oncologist than it does to the mother of the child, doesn't it? And so, to me, this question has an intellectual aspect, but it is a huge, heart-rending pastoral aspect. And if we forget either of those and offer simplistic answers, we'll get utterly nowhere. And ladies and gentlemen, I have no simplistic answers to this. But I think there is a way into a possibility. Let me express it as modestly as that. And what is that? Well, first of all, let me go down the intellectual route for a moment. Fry says this is evil, it's awful. Where does he get his concept of evil from? Dawkins, who's one of his friends, says this universe is just as you'd expect it to be. If at bottom there is no good, no evil, no justice. DNA just is and we dance to its music. So what he's doing is following his atheism to eliminate morality and then Christianity being criticized for being evil. That is totally inconsistent. And I'm not impressed with it. But I understand it because Dawkins is following the logic of his worldview, but at the same time he discovers he's a human being with moral principles built in. Of course, because from where I sit, he's been hardwired by God as made in God's image as a moral being. So the big problem is, if you go to atheism because of the problem of suffering and evil, you then have a very big difficulty in knowing what suffering is. And you see, the Russians who knew a lot about this and suffered a lot and wrote about it in novels rather than philosophical treatises, Dostoevsky, Yesli Bogan yet to If God does not exist, everything is permissible. And he didn't mean atheists couldn't behave. Of course they can. They're made in the image of God. What he meant was, and I think he was right, that if you don't have God there in the background, you have no grounds for concepts of good and evil. That's why we're in such a mess in Western Europe, by the way. We have eliminated God as a transcendent source of morality. So we're trying to get good and evil from biology. But that's difficult. Darwin was a nice chap with a big beard and he studied ants. And he saw a wonderful example of cooperation. His contemporary Spencer saw nature, the survival of the fittest, the struggle. So depending on what biology you follow, you can invent any morality you like. And that's why we're in a mess partially. Now, that's a huge topic, but it's a serious topic because what we are fighting about in our society now is what is a human being? What is morality? So my first major point would be 
the atheist route doesn't solve any of this, these problems. My atheist friends think they've solved the problem, but I say to them, look, you have rationalized it, but has the suffering gone away? Has that child still got bone cancer? Yes, it has. You haven't solved the suffering. You think you've solved an intellectual problem, which you haven't, but you've not removed the suffering, but you have removed something else. You have removed all hope. Atheism is a hopeless philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. And it comes a colossal cropper when it comes to this problem. And I've sat with many people who've suffered terribly or lost all their relatives in the gas chamber and said to them, okay, there isn't any God then. And they say, what do you mean? Well, I said, you're on you, there isn't any God, but where do you go? Have you solved the suffering? No, it's still with you. Have you any hope? No. But I still believe in God. Why do you still believe in God? Well, I said, for this reason, and this is only the beginning of a reason. You see, at the heart of my Christian faith, not my theism, my Christian faith, you know there stands a cross. Now, what's that say? The claim is that the person who died on that cross was God incarnate. What is God doing on a cross, to put it bluntly? Is it not at least saying to us that God has not remained distant from the problem of human suffering but has himself become part of it? Many times I watch the tears flow as people begin to realize that this is getting into this question not by giving a philosophical answer but giving the heartbeat of God. Now I say, of course, if he'd stayed on that cross and suffered like countless thousands of others, suffered crucifixion, that would be the end of it. But you see, the message goes on to say that this person has risen from the dead. And that if you trust him, even in all your grief and suffering and pain and uncertainty and unanswered questions, what he promises is, that he will give you forgiveness immediately and give you eternal life and give you peace and give you power to live. It won't take away the pain, but it may infuse your life with a meaning that will help you to cope with it. Because you see, if Christ is raised from the dead, death isn't the end. And that baby that dies with cancer, utter tragedy. But if you could see it now, in the presence of God, I suspect, I can't prove it to you, but I suspect you would have no more questions. That is my way into this lady.